Last time we got our autocomplete suggestions set up here, so I can start typing uh, anything. In, I can type an address, a state, a city, a country, anything, and it will start giving me auto suggestions. Now we need to add functionality so that when we click on these auto suggestions, it will get us information on that location and then redirect the camera to that location. So uh, we're going to get started in map activity, and we're, I'm going to start actually at the very bottom because I need to create uh, a bunch of new stuff down here. And to help things stay organized, I'm actually going to kind of separate things. So I'm going to give this a heading. I'm going to say autocomplete, uh, actually Google Places API. So Google Places API autocomplete suggestions. And keep that separate because it's going to be quite a bit of code kind of underneath this little section right here. And the first thing we need to do is create an, a, a non-click listener for the when you click on the autocomplete suggestions. So I'm going to go adapter, adapter view, oops, if I could spell, adapter, adapter view, and then do dot on item click listener, and then I'm going to call it m auto complete click listener, this listener, and equals new adapter view on item click, where is it? I guess this one, on item click listener. And so there's our interface. I'm going to add a semicolon down at the bottom. And the first thing I want to do is actually just hide the keyboard as soon as we select an option. And now we need to, we need to get the place ID and then we need to submit a request to the places geodata API to retrieve the place object. That's basically what the goal of this is. It's to get a plate, what's called a place object. So P-L-A-C-E, a place object. And we need to get this place object because these place objects contain all kinds of properties like an address, phone number, uh, website URL, their latitude and longitude, like basically everything you can think of a, of, a, of a location. So what, what we can get is the place ID and then we can submit a request and then get the place that's associated with that place ID. So, um, so we'll get the place ID. So final uh, string place ID equals item or whatever, whatever we have here, I, I guess. Oh no, we need to get the item first. So final autocomplete uh, prediction, we'll call it item equals M adapter. So M autocomplete, M place autocomplete adapter, and then dot get item. And then we refer to the item that we're looking at right here. So we can just do I. And then to get the place ID, we do item dot get place ID. And so that's that's cool. Now we have the place ID. Now we need to submit a request. So what we need to do is get a pending result and do place buffer. Place result equals places dot geo data API. And then dot get place by ID. Then we can pass that place ID. And oh, we actually need to give our submit our Google client first. So Google API client and then the place ID. And you'll notice here, I think it showed that we can we can actually submit a list of place IDs, but we're just going to submit a single place ID for this one. And then we do place result dot set result callback. And then we need to create a method or uh, we need to create this actual result callback. So I'm going to call it M update place details callback and we need to we need to create this still so we're going to scroll down and do private uh, result callback and do place buffer and then m update place details callback and then equals new result callback and you can see the interface there so I'm just going to click on the interface I'm going to add a semicolon down there and so this is the callback that's going to be able to get us all that information on the place this submits the request and then this when a, when a request is successfully received then this callback method will execute or this callback interface will execute and we'll get that place that we're looking for that place object so we'll start by writing some simple logic here so if places dot get status get status dot is success then we know we're good and we got our place or sorry 
if it's if it's not successful, then we know it's not good and we did not get our place. So we can just go log d uh, place query did not complete successfully, and uh, we could print out the issue, I guess. So places get status and then to string, and that will print out uh, what happened. And one thing that you always need to remember to do using the places I, I, uh, API is you need to release the place. Um, if you don't, you'll end up getting an error and it will show up in your log. And I just uh, took a second and looked through the documentation because I couldn't remember why you need to use release. I just remembered that you needed to use it. So here I'll just bring up the documentation. And I found here, so to prevent memory leaks, you must release the place buffer object when your app no longer needs it. So it doesn't do it automatically. And as you can see, kind of an example right here, if you ever get a place buffer object, you need to always call release or you get memory leaks. So just very important to remember to do that. Okay, and then so if that fails, then we'll return. If otherwise, then we know that we actually have our place. So we can go final place place equals places dot get the first indices. And then we can actually print out that information if you wanted to. Uh, the places API unfortunately doesn't have a two string method, so I can't like go place dot two string. That won't work. Uh, I wish they did. I don't know why they don't, but uh, definitely that would be something that would be good to add. So uh, so any anyway, so place details, and I could just do place dot get attributions, and we can copy this line a bunch of times and get viewport, get phone number, get website, get ID, get address, get latitude longitude. Anyway, you get the idea. You basically you can get anything you need from the places object. That's that's why you want to get it. And so now that we have the place, let's actually create a global variable, a glo global uh, place place object. So go private place m place. And then we can set it down in our callback here. So we can go uh, m place equals place. Uh, actually, I just re I just remembered that I can't do that because later at, at the bottom of this um, the bottom of this interface, I have to do places dot release to prevent memory leaks. And if I do places dot release, that also means that this object will be wiped. So that's not going to work. So what we can do though is I can create a custom object class and then set the parameters from the place object. And that probably sounded confusing, so I'm just going to do it. So we'll go into project app and create a new let's create a new package actually and call it uh, models. Just because that's what I like to do when I'm creating new Java classes. So I'm gonna call this place info. And inside place info, I'm gonna hold all the parameters for a place object. So that way when we call release, I'm not going to lose that information. So private uh, string name, private string address, private string phone number, private string ID, private URI website, whoops, URI website URI, private lat long, lat long, private float rating, private string attributions, and then just alt insert our default constructor, and hard return, do a couple hard returns here, oh, that's fine, and so I'm going to copy this, paste it one more time, get rid of all the inputs, just so we have an empty constructor. And then alt insert one more time, get the getter and setter methods and scroll down to the bottom. And now we can actually get a two string method. So that's convenient. And there we go. So now we'll go back into map activity. And instead of doing all this, we can do uh, what we'll do is change this place object. So go to the top and we'll change this to a place info object. And so get rid of that. And I'll do uh, m place equals new place info. And then do m place set name to the name. So I can just do place dot get name. 
and you gotta do two string because it's a character sequence. And now I'm just gonna do that for all the properties. I don't remember how many they were, so I'm just gonna copy a bunch. So set address, get address, set attributions. Uh, I don't have attributions. Or do I? I do have that, okay. So get attributions and set the ID, get ID, set latitude and longitude, get latitude longitude. I can delete the two string on that one. I can also delete the two string on that one. Set the rating, get rating. I can get rid of the two string on that, obviously. And we have, oops, we have some more. Set phone number, get phone number. I think that's it. No, website. That's a character secret. That has to be two string. Set website URI and oh, what happened there? Place dot get website URI. Okay. So now we have our custom place object and I can actually delete all this so it's much more efficient. You can do log D and you can do just do place and do our m place dot two string because we created a two string method so we can cut down on a lot of code there. And just in case some of these parameters are null, we should definitely surround this in a try catch and catch the null pointer exception. So log e e dot get message and just put that I should probably put that in here tab those in okay so that's that's all good and now the last part is going to be moving the camera so we can just go move camera and we can do a new latitude and longitude and we can do our place dot get uh, latitude and longitude oh, actually I can just I don't need to create a new latitude longitude object can just do that and then pass our default zoom and we have a title here so um, I guess you could do mplace.get name for the title. Uh, and I think that should actually be good. So we have our callback. Yes. We need to set the onclick listener. Uh, so let's scroll up to the very top and go up here. And we just need to do m search text set onclick listener. And this is where we pass our autocomplete onclick listener or set on item click listener. Set on item click listener. And that should be good. Uh, let's just run it and see if we get any errors because we just typed a lot of code. Okay, let's go to the map. And let's start typing our Universal Studios. I'm just going to click one of these. And we get a crash. <laughs> I mean, usually you can't get away with writing that much code without getting some kind of an issue. So let's take a look. It's a null pointer, so that's not a big deal. Um, let's click it. Take a look take a look where it's pointing me to uh, right here so it's telling me that the latitude or and longitude is null so let's go back down to our callback so what probably happened was a null pointer got thrown in here and then it never got set uh, let me try something else so instead of doing get latitude longitude let's do um, new lat long and then do place dot get viewport get center and then latitude and then comma place get viewport get center uh, and then longitude and let's try that out okay let's take a look Universal Studios click it and that time it looks like it worked so it took us to the location uh, we got our little marker popping down there let's check the log and see if it printed out any information so it's still through a null pointer so that means one one of these properties is null basically so if it was the first one for example a null pointer would get thrown and then the rest of this code doesn't get run so um, including this two string so that's why we're not seeing anything being printed out so that's uh, that's not good but uh, everything other than that is working it's taking us to the correct location and all that stuff so if you really wanted to figure out which which one was causing the issue I guess you could just do like you, you could do a log after each one so you could do like name equals place dot get name and after this one so address equals place dot get address 
and attributions. Place that get attributions. ID. Place that get ID. Wanted wanted. Place that get wanted wanted. Uh, rating. Get the rating. And phone number. Place that get phone number. And then last is the website. So website URI. Place that get website URI. And we can run that again and see exactly which one is causing the problem. Okay, click on map. Universal Studios. Check the log. Let's see. Okay, so we get the name and we get the address. So the one after that. Uh, attributions. So the attributions is causing the issue. I am just going to comment it out. And uh, this video is getting kind of long, so we're going to move on to the next part. And the next part is going to be displaying information when we click on the marker. So when I click on this marker, I want it to pop up a little window telling me the name of the place, the address, the phone number, and the website. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.